What's up everybody, it's Jesse back again. Uh, today I got the CAZ06 behind me and what we're gonna do is a uh, very non-expensive, pretty much free, <laughs> modification to uh, your CAZ. What I wanna do is I wanna lower it, right? Um, I was looking at the car like, man, this car looks great the way it comes from the factory. It's amazing, it handles great, does all that stuff, looks good. But I've always liked my cars to just be a little bit lower than what they do or what they come from, uh, from the factory. So I was looking at the car and I tried to figure out, okay, what can I do? Do I need to go get like, you know, different coilovers or whatever for the car? No, you don't gotta do any of that stuff. From the factory on your C8 Z06, you can lower this car. Um, I don't know exactly how far you can lower it. We're gonna find out. On every Corvette, at least the C7, C6 at least, the ones I've owned, um, you know, they, there's these little bowls that you can, you know, twist and lower the car down a little bit. You can damn near slam it. I've seen some pretty low. Um, I don't think you'll be able to get it down that low on this, but you should be able to get it down a decent amount. So um, we're gonna find out today. Um, there's a few tools that you'll need and um, it's something you can do in your own garage. You don't have to be a highly skilled mechanic or anything like that to do it. I'm not like a highly skilled mechanic. Um, I just know my general way around cars, but honestly, anybody can do this as long as you just have these few tools that I'm gonna show you. Um, you have a little bit of space to do it, and um, you know, maybe garage, you can even do it in your backyard, you can do it in your front yard, you can do it in your driveway, you can do it on the street, wherever you wanna do it, um, you can be doing this at home. So um, yeah, about to get to it and uh, show you real quick. First thing I wanna do is I wanna measure the gaps, right? So this is a rear wheel right here, and I just wanted to kind of show you guys basically what that gap is between like the tire and the wheel wheel, right? And it basically looks to be about two inches. Um, you know, this is just me doing this right here. It might, maybe could be a little bit less, a little bit more, I don't know, but on average, you know, just not being super perfect about it. It's about two inches or so is that gap. And that's on the rear wheel. Now looking on the uh, front wheel, looks to be somewhere around like, eh, maybe, oops, hold on, there we go. Maybe about like uh, a little bit over an inch and a half, about maybe an inch and three quarters or so. Uh, inch and three quarters, I would say something around there is about what it looks to be on this front wheel. And then I wanted to kind of showcase basically right here. So in the front right here, front splitter, it's about, it's about seven inches, right? Seven inches is that front splitter. So let's look at that real quick. You can see from the ground, so basically the bottom of the splitter, it's about seven inches up high. So now we got the um, ride heights basically kind of measured out. And I didn't measure every part of the car. I just really wanted to kind of measure the parts that people were really kind of paying attention to. You know, obviously if I wanted to go way more in depth, I could, but not. Eventually I gotta get this car aligned anyways after we do this, but just wanted to, you know, at least kind of show you kind of what the wheel gaps are from, you know, rear, front and that front splitter because that's stuff people are going to be probably paying attention to because when you lower the car down obviously when you're going in and out of different driveways and different places you know you don't want to be scraping so we'll see what it does so in fact we'll see how low this thing gets dropped but next thing up is I want to show you the uh, tools that I'm going to be using today and some of you are going to have some different tools whatever but this is what I think you'll pretty much need you're going to need this right here, flat head, and you're gonna need this one about kind of this size right here, and I'll show you exactly why once we get there. Then you're gonna need a smaller one, one that you can use. To, there's gonna be this little collar thing we're gonna have to like pry a little bit, but you'll need just a smaller one that will help. Obviously, you'll need the socket, you'll need the seven eighths. This is to get your wheels off. Um, then you'll need your wheel lock um, for those who have wheel locks, and hopefully you all do. Spanning wrench. Now, I <laughs> I don't know which one is going to be the right size. I have a bunch of these and I have some more, I think, in my tool bag, hopefully. But um, one of these are gonna work. So I don't know which one I need yet until I get in there. You need a Sharpie because you're gonna wanna mark some different spots just so when you're turning, um, when you're, when you're basically bringing down the coilover and stuff, you wanna mark just so you can know how many turns you're actually doing as you're going down. 
Um, I have my um, tape measure right here so I can do some measuring. We'll need some gaffing tape. I'll show you exactly why. Uh, it doesn't have to be gaffing tape. It could be electrical tape too. Um, I have my impact gun just because it makes it a little bit easier taking wheels on and off. And you don't have to have these, but it definitely helps a lot. I highly suggest you can go on like Amazon or go to any store, I think, order these little hockey puck things. And these basically are, uh, they go into a little slot underneath the car when you're jacking it up. And then it helps when you uh, jack it up <laughs> so that you don't gotta put this big thing on the wrong spot and start cracking and stuff which I've done before in other cars it sucks um yeah and you'll need a jack too by the way but all the tools you pretty much need and obviously you need some space you want to be safe uh you know don't have kids around or pets or anything that gonna bother you always be safe jacking this stuff up um you know if you want to throw a uh if you want to throw a uh jack stand underneath um as well if you can do all that you don't necessarily have to but you know it's suggested to be safe but uh yeah that's what we got and uh, that's how we're gonna start this all right first i'm gonna put the hockey puck in so basically yeah we're going going underneath the car we're going for that jacking point there it is right there so that's um you can put the jack just on this whole area here if you want um but i highly suggest using the puck. I call it a hockey puck, it's not a hockey puck, but <laughs> anyways, you're gonna slide that in there. I can't really see, because I can pull this camera, slide it in there, twist it, and then boom, it's sitting right there. And once you do that, then you can basically put the jack and jack it up, and it just makes it so much easier. It's a lot safer uh, for your car. So you can see I got the um, jacking puck there and my jack all lined up in there. So then from there, you can pretty much, let's see. jacking watch that it goes right into that spot boom it's not even touching the car it's just chucking tucked in the puck and you can raise the car from there way better all right you got the car all jacked up there it's good you just need about that much off the ground you don't get all crazy with it and uh, next up is um you know obviously using your impact gun and your seven eights you're gonna get all these off I'm sure all of you have some, um, uh, you know, wheel locks on your wheels. Hopefully you do. Use your wheel lock. Throw it on there. Boom, boom, boom. It's all tight in there now. It's good. I'm gonna get this thing all off. Come on. There we go. All right, now that we got jacked up and the wheel is off. All right, so we'll take a look. So obviously here's your coilover right here things that will be adjusting so basically you know for those who don't know we're basically trying to get this lower because it's going to lower the car we're going to be adjusting that we're going to be adjusting that this is the um, collar that's going to need to come off before we do all that stuff it's funny because what they use to kind of keep this collar up <laughs> is this electrical tape that comes from the factory so high horsepower high performance car electrical tape <laughs> So anyways, um, we'll use gaffing tape instead next time because that's all I got right now. And that should work. I got some like, what's this, this back here? Tire stuff, yeah, shred a little tire. Anyways, um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And I'll show you kind of the steps to make that happen with what we got. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my Sharpie, right? The reason why we got this Sharpie is because we're gonna make marks so we know where we're at, right? So I'm gonna take this Sharpie and basically, you can see in line with this uh, upper control arm right here, you're gonna want to pretty much, because as we turn as we turn um, these these little, I forgot, I forget what they're called, I'm just call them hats or whatever. When we turn these down so that we can bring it down so we can lower this, right? You don't wanna forget how many times you've turned it, right? So in order to not forget, because you know it all kind of looks the same all the way around, it's not like there's only like one notch here and you know, like they all kind of look the same. So you could easily get confused and be like, wait, how many times did I turn it? Or, you know, did I, is that a half turn or a three quarters of a turn? I don't know. So what you can do to um, keep from that happening is just mark it, right? We're gonna mark right there on this top one. We're gonna mark on this bottom one. And we're gonna keep it basically all in line with this right here or as much close as we can, just so we know every time we come back around. You can even maybe like mark right here too as well, um, just so you can kind of see. And just keep that in line so you know, okay, boom, this one turn, that's three quarters of a turn or half a turn or whatever it is. And it just makes it a lot easier so you don't screw up. <laughs> 
All right, there we go. So you see how I made that mark? Are all my lines perfect? Yeah, they're as close as they need to be. Should be all right. Um, but anyways, I put my one line right here on this upper control arm with the other line on that top little bottom hat thingy and then, um, and then uh, in the bottom one too as well. So you can see I just kind of did what I could to draw in there and make that work. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this electrical tape. So it might be kind of hard to see with this video, but there's this electrical tape that goes around that's pretty much holding this up. So we're gonna just find out where the end is and peel it off. All right, basically, so I found the end. I started peeling it. It's a little blurry in here, but anyways, found the end, started peeling. All right, oops, it's so hard to do this while you're trying to record. <laughs> I need my shooter with me. Henry, where are you at? Anyways, peeling this electrical tape off. Look at that. Right off, super easy. This is coming off super easy. Boom, there you go. It's off now. So we should allow this to now take, we're gonna pull this down, but we're gonna need our little smaller screwdriver to get up in here in between these two and get this thing down. So you're gonna take the smaller screwdriver, right? You're gonna wanna stick it right in between here. So you don't wanna be here, you don't wanna be up here. You wanna be between this little black hat in there. You're gonna stick it in there, in between, and you're gonna turn it like this a little bit. Let's see, it's kind of hard to do this on, um, on video, but you're gonna wanna turn it basically where it's kind of like sitting like that. So you gotta turn right there, right? And yes, it's gonna scratch up some stuff a little bit, but that's just how it is, it's okay. Turn it, so now that it's uh, turned right there, it's basically sitting, basically sitting just like that you do that you have to use two hands i'm not gonna be able to record and do it at the same time but once it's turned like that you'll use your right hand to hold on to the screwdriver use your left hand to twist this and that will should get it down off of it right you might have to wiggle it and work with it a little bit but that should help you be able to pretty much do that so remember once again make sure that that's turned just like that don't mind the scratches that's me messing with this thing a little bit right before this to make sure i was doing do what I was doing, but yeah, that's what you gotta do. It took a little bit of messing with it <laughs> to make it work, but uh, we made it work. So anyways, now that I did that, um, pretty much I'm holding it up right now, but once I was working with it with the screwdriver, or sorry, with the flathead, now it, it pretty much just slide down like this, easy. It's not being held up anymore. It's not being held up in place. So let it come down and just let it sit. And then we'll start working on these. Alrighty, so I got my spinning wrenches right here. Got this uh, one too right here in my hand, but I just wanted to kind of show you what's going on. So basically what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna basically go down to like lowering this now. So the goal is you're gonna take one of your spinning wrenches, right? And you're gonna use it to hold right here so you get it all in place. You're gonna use that to hold. Once you're holding with this, you're gonna use your left hand as you're, you're holding it with your right, but you use your left hand with one of your other wrenches and you're gonna need a smaller one, right? The smaller one on this bottom piece right here, see this bottom piece? You're gonna have it on there and you're gonna spin this way. So you're gonna spin it to the left, right? This bottom one to come down. But you're gonna need to hold them both together at first so that you can like hold this in place, you can break these apart. But um, pretty much that's what you gotta do right there. Uh, as you're lowering this, I'm gonna probably go about 12 turns to lower it down. 12 total full turns to get it down and do 12 turns again with that, get that all lined up. Um, I'm gonna do 12 turns on the rear, 10 turns on the front. So 12 turns here, and then on my front, I'll do 10 turns, right? 12 here, 10. All right, you can do 11, you can do 10, um, 10 what, how many ever you want to do. If you only want to lower a little bit, whatever you want to do, just figure out what's best for you. But for me, I think it's going to be perfect. It's going to bring you down to somewhere around like right here or so, which works for me. Um, as you're spinning these down, this whole thing might move around. If it does, you probably want to put some tape between the shock and this to hold it all together. Then use your left hand to hold this while you're bringing these down so that it's not spinning because if you're spinning everything at once you're not really going anywhere so that's just a tip right there but that's what we're going to do i'm going to need two hands to kind of do this so it's going to be a little bit difficult to try to record and twist and do all that at the same time but i'll show you kind of what it looks like right after i'm done twisting these down but you get the point right you're going to want to bring this lower one down first and bring this one down next you can use your spanner wrenches you'll need two you need like maybe a bigger one and a smaller one and then that should work right there for when you are messing with this. Clean it up a little bit so it's not all dirty. 
Um, don't use water, just use like, you know, I don't know, a little rag or whatever, just wipe off some of this dust and grime or whatever is here. So I just use both of those spanning wrenches right there to break these apart. So I just, you can see what the distance was. So that's my marking right here. That's what it basically took to kind of break it apart. The reason why you want to break these two apart, because if you try to start lowering this down without, like let's say it was already just already, you know, where it was stock alignment, all the stuff, start lowering down. It just keeps like wanting to move this. It doesn't work. So you got to kind of twist them apart from each other to break it off. And then you can lower. So once you do break it off, it actually depends on how many miles you got in the car, as long as this thing isn't dirty, you're stuck or whatever, which will happen over time. Um, you can, once you break it apart, you can pretty much use your hand to start twisting apart. So now, now you wanna once again, pay attention to how many times you, you don't wanna go like, you know, 15 times and forget, you know? So now that we've broken it apart a little bit, I'm gonna do, watch this, use my hand. I can actually, I'm gonna do my first full turn, right? Bring it around, bring it around, bring it around. That's turn number one. Turn number two. Turn number three. Turn number four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. total and you can see how basically let's try to make this not as blurry boom you can see how low this got so there's still a little bit left that it could go i think like one more turn max <laughs> but um anyways it's at 12. um i'm wondering should i keep it 12 or should i Plot twist, <laughs> I'm gonna go, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, I'm gonna go back up one more round. So we're gonna go 11. I'm gonna do 11 up here. And instead of doing 10 up front, I'll look, I'll look up front to see if 10's still good or if I'll do nine or something like that. I'm gonna do 11. I, don't, I just, for whatever, I'm not comfortable with being this close down here. So we're gonna go back up one. So this time we're going left to lower down. So we'll go right to come back up. So we're already at 12, right? We're gonna bring it back up to 11. go get it line there you go all right now we are right there at 11 <laughs> at 11 there you go next up is uh we are going to lower this top mount right here so we're gonna use the spanner wrench remember you gotta go left to right to do it and remember what i said earlier when you start twisting this it might start moving this like you know this this thing in the bob so watch this you know so you like what i'm talking about so if you start moving see how it's like moving it a little bit I don't like that. So I'll have to use my right hand to hold that. You can use some tape, whatever you gotta do to hold this in place so as if you're moving this, it's not moving that at the same time because that's all bad. So do what you gotta do, but we're gonna lower this, those 11 rounds down to match with this and then get them all tied up with each other again. Once again, keep it in line with that. Alrighty, I got them both uh, lowered down now. So you can see right there. <laughs> It's, um, you got, got it in line right there. It might, you might have a little bit off because once you want, once you tighten back, uh, tighten these back up kind of together, you know, it might be just a hair off. So once you finally got this lowered down all the way to where it finally needs this, you're gonna want to grab the second spanning wrench again, hold this one in place as you tighten this one up and get these in line. This helps so much by having, 
these marked lines right here. If you don't, then you're gonna be sitting there like, oh crap, where was I at? You know, so it just, it helps so much. You're gonna wanna do all that and it all lines up perfectly once you get it down there. A little, a little bit of more of, <laughs> this, bringing this one down is easy. This one down is uh, a little bit harder. I mean, it's, it, it comes down, but it's just, you know, you put a little bit more muscle and shoulder into it. So uh, hopefully you got good shoulders <laughs> and arms, but um, anyways, got it down. So now basically kind of, you know, now the next step up is, uh, I believe I need to bring this hat back up here and get it all taped up and all that fun stuff. But um, also before you do that, you'll probably want to write here. So we don't forget, remember we did 11 turns to bring this down. So you wanna want to write 11 right here, just so you can remember. Or you just write it down in your notes on your phone or somewhere where you won't lose it. Um, you definitely won't lose it if it's here, but um, use a Sharpie that's not gonna go away. You know, but I'm gonna write 11 turns there so I know. All right, so next step is you're gonna grab that hat that was sitting, you know how we just let it sit down there after we took it off originally. We're gonna grab that and we're going to push it back over this. And by the way, I remember I wrote my 11 turns, so I don't forget. And anyways, we're gonna bring it back up here. Now, so it doesn't just slip on and just stay there. You're gonna wanna put it here and you're gonna wanna use like that uh, smaller screwdriver or bigger, whatever screwdriver, or sorry, or flathead or whatever works, flathead, use a flathead. Um, you're gonna stick it right underneath this little lip right there where my thumb is. And you're gonna push up on that, boom, like that, push up, and use your hand to twist it on. So obviously I'm holding the camera, so I can't do it all at once, but you get the point. So you're gonna put it up here, put the flat head right underneath so I can hold it, and then you're gonna wanna uh, use one hand to kind of twist it on as you're pushing it up, pushing pressure, and it should slip back in there. Then you're gonna wanna put tape all the way around the tape on here, here together to hold it up. Just like that electrical tape in the beginning had this thing up, you're gonna put that gaffer tape or electrical tape, whatever you wanna do on here to hold it all together. So I'm gonna do that right now because you can't do it without having two hands. I switched to my bigger uh, flat head versus the small one. The small one, I felt like I was gonna puncture that thing. Um, I don't think it was puncturing it, I just felt like it was, I don't know why. So anyways, push the bigger one because it's not as sharp. And I just basically used it to, you pretty much just gotta get this top little lip to click into that little lip, uh, to the um, indented area underneath this that allows it to clip in there. That's basically the thing. So however you got a jimmy in, in there, just get that in there so all the way around so it's all slid up. And once it's in there, it doesn't, you can, and still like twist it around a little bit, but it's not coming down. If it's, if you think you got it in there and it's still coming down, then it's not in there. <laughs> it should not be coming down. So just remember that. And then from there, now it's time to just take here to here. And there we go. So that was the last part right there. We got the gaffer tape on. It's all taped up. Looks a bit cleaner than the electrical tape. Just make sure it's all like, you know, tight on there and everything. Make sure you don't have any. Make sure there's no little gaps. You don't want anything seeping in there and getting this tape off of here. So make sure it's all good. My taping job isn't perfect. I'm not a professional tape man, but this should get the job done. But whatever you feel comfortable with. But anyways, that's that on that. So we have lowered now this right rear corner of the car. Now you gotta do those same steps on each corner of the car. I'm not gonna record every corner because that's gonna you're gonna be here for it ever, <laughs> but you get the point. So um, yeah, time for me to get to work and get these other corners down, and then I'll show you exactly what the car looks like uh, afterwards, and we'll do some more measurements. I just got done with the uh, the whole uh, right side of the car, <laughs> and I don't know sure if you can tell from this video, but I haven't even done the, the, the driver's side yet, and you can see the car leaning over to the right side, so it definitely dropped. I mean, this, this does make a difference, and we'll see what the gap ends up like finally looking like when everything gets all settled, but it, it's, I mean, I dropped it down, and I'm like, do I have something on the other side holding the car up? I'm like, no, <laughs> it's just, that's the difference right there, so anyways, I don't, I'm not sure if it's easy for you to see from this angle let's see there you go down here I mean, you can see it's dropped <laughs> the other side the driver's side is raised at its normal stock level and this uh right side passenger side is dropped for sure I and mean, you can see this thing it's it's uneven <laughs> Alrighty, I finally am done. You can see there definitely is a difference for sure. This thing has already dropped. <laughs> it looks good. It's not like a crazy aggressive drop, but it's aggressive enough. I mean, it does, it kind of comes the way the car I think should have came. 
and man, it looks so good. I'll kind of I'll just go through and basically show you the measurements on the front and rear now, and also that um, front spoiler to kind of show you exactly um, how much it did drop. And it's crazy because it's not a lot, but it just ends up looking like a lot. All right, so remember, this is a rear wheel right here. Remember when we measured it before, it was two inches. Now that gap is an inch and a half, so about a, or about a half an inch drop back here, which it looks so good. It doesn't seem like it's a lot, but it looks so good from you know standing you know two feet away from the car, three feet, 10 feet, 50 feet, but a half inch drop. And on the front, remember it was an inch and three quarters. Now it's the inch and a quarter, so about another half inch drop up front too as well. And then up front on the front splitter, you can see about six and a half inches or so, something around that range. Um, but six and a half inches now versus seven inches. So once again, another half inch drop up front. So I'm super pumped to finally have this done. Took me a little bit longer than I thought it was gonna be. Thought it was gonna be maybe 15, 20 minutes per wheel tire. Um, a little bit longer than that. Um, once I finally got a hang of kind of how to, especially take that little boot thingy off of on the bottom before you start cranking down um, this, uh, these coilovers, on the bottom of the coilovers. Uh, once I figured that out a little bit better and quicker way to do it, um, or at least got just better at it, really isn't a quicker way to do it, you just gotta get better at it. Um, then it started cranking out a little bit faster, but still, it's probably about 30 minutes each wheel, wheel tire. So um, yeah, anyways, uh, each corner of the car looks great now. Uh, now you gotta get it aligned. So I gotta, um, you know, do, uh, do a nice little alignment on the car. Anytime you lower a car, it changes the suspension settings, right? So, um, you know, these cars, uh, any car period in general, go lower, you know, things start changing all over the place. You know, so you gotta make sure everything's right, like your toe, your camber, all that fun stuff. You gotta make sure it's good to go. So either have a professional do it, or if you know what you're doing, you can do it at home. I don't think I'm in a level enough area to be really doing it properly. So um, I'm gonna have a, a pro do it at a pro shop and get it professionally done. Somebody who knows a lot more than me when it comes to alignments. <laughs> you get the cars aligned the way you want, man, the cars handle amazing. The car already handles amazing from the factory, but a little bit of alignment changes, you can make it even better. But anyways, the car looks great now. I'm about to go on a drive and feel like feel what it feels like now with the car being a little bit lower. Anytime you lower it, you lower the center of gravity. When you lower the center of gravity, cars get even better, usually. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm about to see how it is and go on a little test drive. But thanks for tuning in. And uh, that is how you lower your C8 Z06. By the way, I'm not sure if this works on the ones that come with uh, the um, nose lift option. I'm not sure somebody had told me that, that it might not be able to do that up front. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I don't know. So um, this car does not have a nose lift option. So I don't have any button to press the, uh, um, to, to press inside the car and raise the nose if I'm going over certain things. So um, I have no clue about those cars. I just know the ones without that, um, you can do exactly what I just did on all four corners and lower your car yourself with a coilover. So anyways, that's how you do it. If you got any questions, reach out, comment, Hit me up on Instagram, YouTube, whatever you name it, and um, I'll help you out. All right, thanks. So far, so good. Car feels good. I put it into uh, some different modes to kind of feel what the suspension felt like, especially with uh, it being lower, and it feels good. looks good with the new drop. I'm absolutely loving it. For whatever reason, the left side looks like a hair bit higher. Maybe that's because, uh, maybe because the way, I don't know, the shocks are set up where it's uh, also accounting for weight of a driver jumping in. But either way, this car looks freaking amazing. Absolutely loving the way this came out. Looks absolutely solid. This is basically what it looks like when it's riding down the road. Super sexy. And yeah, I love everything about it. It's great. It worked. It worked out.